Hello. <laughs> Do you hear me? They won't be. They won't be able to speak back to us. Do you read me? Yes, I'm uh, Yeah. Today is Wednesday, November 15th, 2017, at about 1, one o'clock, our time. Okay, so we will put our hands on our heart. And we are setting up, and we will be broadcasting in a few minutes. Something. Wishing you a happy birthday, whoever is celebrating a birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> I know that Barbara Heffernan, the former secretary at Barry University School of Education. I was taking her lunch. It was her birthday on the 12th of November. And it was Jim's. So Dr. Tullis. This camera's not going to work. Okay. It was his birthday on November that 5th. camera link is not working. And we celebrated in style with all the Filipino relatives. So can you see the... Um, singing and dancing. The YouTube live stream for pictures there? Filipino folk songs. Have Take your... Take your headphones off for a second. What? Do you can you see the YouTube stuff? I can. Okay. I'm live. I'm like level one person. All right. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we have some new options for um, our live stream workshop, and so um, Kirsten is over um, out of, off camera on a computer where she can read comments if you guys want to um, send questions or comments via the Google chat. And let's see, I'm getting a text that's not from you guys. And my cell phone um, is 312-545-3865. So you can call in and maybe it would be great if somebody called in to just let us know that we were good to go. And I see speaker is on from a text, so that sounds like we're good to go over there. Um, this camera just went out of focus, and here is here's a we don't, we don't this camera, this power camera needs, needs to be on. Still needs to be on. The, camera the camera link. link. And, and we, we will get, get um, there's an echo in here now. Turn, turn off, off the, the uh, speaker. speaker. What? Turn off, turn off the speaker, speaker on that computer. On the, the, the computer. Okay. okay. And Mom, you're, you're on. on. Okay. Good afternoon. I think you, you can, can see, see me and you can hear me. So our theme for today is communication. Actually, we have three words there. Listen, speak, write. And listen really stands for all the nonverbal communication. 
repeat that one. There's an echo. Something's echoing. Okay. Are you people on the cameras off? Do you have the vis mm. audio off? That can be. There we go. Okay. We have a subtitle for this workshop. It's called, We Learn to Read and Write the Way We Learn to Talk. Do you agree with me? <laughs> so communication is an innate need. That means there's just a need to communicate and we look for ways to communicate. That's why even... Uh, there's an echo. I'm hearing two audio inputs okay. here. Yes. There are two audio inputs running so right now. The, um, going on. This audio is quiet. So that's why you notice that even the, the deaf and the dumb, they make their own gestures to communicate their need because it is an innate human need to communicate. Well, how does an infant communicate? Well, have you heard an infant cry? That piercing cry really demands attention, immediate attention. A milder cry also demands attention, but it's not as urgent as a piercing cry. How do we communicate? We communicate in three ways, nonverbal, that means through gestures, our facial expression, and hand signals. We also communicate verbally through words. And we actually combine, combine verbal communication with gestures to emphasize what we really want to say. When you have a question, you know what to do, right? You either call up the cell phone that Mark gave you, which was 312-545-3865. Or you could type in. OK. So. Verbal communication is conversation. That means we use words, we use language. And those words are put together in some regular order called syntax. And we also use grammar. It's, it's a different meaning to say, bring the dog to the room, or to say, bring the room to the dog, I mean, you know. They, they mean differently. So the order and the grammar actually specifies the meaning. We also read poems, sing songs, read stories every day. And we ask questions and we answer questions. In other words, we model. We model all the forms of oral communication so that the child, the learner, will have a whole repertoire of how we communicate in our culture. I have read that it is very important for babies, for early childhood, to be exposed to as much language as possible because although they could not speak, they actually are creating a map, a network of language that will also help them create other networks 
that helped them learn how to speak and later on how to read. Can you do a split screen? Mm -hmm. Here's Ryan. So the first thing we do is try to emphasize that speaking, listening are the two important skills we need to expose the learner to. I think uh, in Montessori, we kind of treasure silence, so we don't really speak, and we don't really have groups that would encourage them to speak to one another, and we don't really schedule time where they're speaking to one another, but let me tell you that it is very important because speaking activates some other neurons that are not activated from looking and reading. Okay, let's begin with rhyming. Rhyming means that the words have the same word ending. The syllables sound alike. So we have the picture of a crown and the picture of a clown. They rhyme together. Clown rhymes with crown. That's in lesson one of your phonemic awareness. Now, the second lesson from phonemic awareness is called counting the number of syllables. A syllable is the natural break of a word. Like if I would say paraphernalia, paraphernalia, that's five syllables. If I say winter, winter, that's only two syllables. But there's, there's a natural break when you say the word, and that's called a syllable. Why do we count the syllables in a word? Because we want to emphasize that some words have one syllable, some words have two, some have three, four or more syllables. And we also want to emphasize that when we are talking about syllables, some we, we want to know where one word ends and the next word begins. Any question? And to that end, I brought a book called Have You Seen Duck? It's published by Scholastic. And this is a beautiful book illustrated about the hero of the story, the pet duck. And this duck is yellow, yellow. How many syllables? Two. And smells like a blanket. How many syllables? Two. And the boy in this story likes to bake cupcakes with chocolate. How many syllables? Three. So in this book, we can read and we can point out the different words and the number of syllables they make. Next to counting the number of syllables is segmenting and blending. Now, this is very important. You might have heard statements from teachers that say, we have taught the letters and the sounds of the letters, but they can't read. Guess what's missing? Segmenting and blending. Unless you do a good number of segmenting and blending, that child won't be able to read. And the moment you do segmenting and blending, wow, all of a sudden, that child can read. OK, let me show you what segmenting and blending means. If I say the color red, which one am I talking about? 
red, red. If I say black, black, that means if I slow down my pronunciation so that each letter is spoken slowly, that's called segmenting. And then in your mind, when you put the sounds together, that's called blending. And those are the two keynotes for learning how to read. You segment the word, and you blend them together, and you find out that that's the word you always knew. Segmenting is breaking down. Blending is putting them back together to say the word, the original word. OK, I have another word. R un, what did I say? Run. How about j ump? Jump. How about if I say s it? Sit. And st and stand. Okay. Now we come to a little complicated but interesting work. We can delete. We can add or insert a sound and create new words. So look, look at my hand. If I say football, football, So if I have football and I remove ball, I'm left with foot. But if I say football and I remove foot, then I have ball. Football. Football. You remove ball, you have foot. Football. You remove foot, you have ball. We can also have rainbow. So if I have bow and I put rain before bow, you have rainbow. Now, that was easier because each one was a word. Now, if I just have a letter instead, so if I start with owl, the word is owl. And I insert in the beginning. Ha, owl, ha, owl. The word is howl, ha, owl, howl. I could also insert I could also delete two syllables. So let's start with hamburger. 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 Now I delete burger. So I'm left with ham. Hamburger. Delete burger. I have Ham. Supposing I have the word ants, ants, and I add at the beginning, I have pants, P ants, pants. I could also have sand. If I insert s before and, I have sand. Or if I have ant and I insert u somewhere in the beginning, I have slant. OK. So those are very interesting and very important skill before learning the letters. 
because it requires the manip manipulation of sounds, either delete, add, move, exchange. Yes, sir. This one, look here. Hey. And that's how we create new words. Let's look at the next slide. Okay. Now, after consistently practicing deleting, adding, exchanging, replacing, all of those sounds without using any letters. That's why it's called phonemic awareness, because it's only it's the sound of the letters, not the visual effect of the letters. Now, you know why we do that, right? Because according to Montessori, you learn best when you try to learn one step at a time. So now we're just learning the skill of manipulating just through the auditory skill, manipulating the sounds. Once we know how to do that, we go into actually learning how the letters look and what they sound like. I, I just want to emphasize that it took a long time for civilization to come to realize how to represent what they say into symbols and to finally come up with what now we call as the alphabet. Do you know what the word alphabet means, what, where it came from, the, how the sound alphabet how it was derived, alpha, that. Okay, that's your homework. Look it up. Next slide. No. So if we have letters and we're only talking about the beginning sound of a symbol. So if we have, okay, next slide. Next slide. I, I can't see that one. I want to see that one. The next slide. <laughs> okay. okay. There you go. So if I have the river, as you can see, the river flows and it branches to have that shape, R river. Okay, be careful. Don't say er, don't, because when you say er, you're inserting the letter E to make the er sound. Just say river and then just cut the ver. So, R okay, just try to say river and then just don't, don't complete the word. R that's how you pronounce that letter. And if we have j for jumping, and if we have k for kick, and m for mountain. Now, if you notice, the letters or the keywords were chosen to sound to look like the letter. For example, river looks like the river and how it branches. And jumping looks like the girl jumping with her foot, uh, lifting in the back to represent that hook of the letter J. Now, in, in the letter K, you can see that there's the body and there's the leg that kicks to represent k. And m is for mountain. And we call those words as keyword because they help us inculcate the sound, which is an abstract concept, into the memory. 
because if you just say er, uh, yeah, it's really hard to, to remember from one day to the next. But if you associate it with a keyword, er, for river, ch, for a jump, and for a kick, and hmm, for a mountain, then we have a way to recall our memory. And we can tie the sounds together to make a story. So let's start with let's start with uh, remembering, recalling the sounds of s or snake and r for river and w for wing because if you really look at the wing this is what we're talking about it's the wing rather than the butterfly and I have another letter called I for insect and th for flower. Okay, I have chosen these letters so I can kind of make up a story. A snake was laying down by the river watching the insect by the flower. Okay, let's let's say it together. The snake was laying down by the river watching the insect by the flower. So you have five letters. And there are only 26 letters of the alphabet. And we have coded five letters. And they would be easy to remember because we made a story together. So yeah, I could even play a game like, who was watching by the river? The snake. And where was the snake watching? By the river. And what was the snake doing? Watching. And what was the snake watching? The insect. Where? By the flower. Now look at that. It's not hard to guess what letter I'm saying. However, I have made another story. It's about our friend the duck. And this is d for duck. And this duck went up. This duck went up. This is up. And this is the letter up. Uh. The duck went up where? The mountain. To do what? To eat noodles. When? On Valentine's Day. Okay, let's say it together. The duck went up the mountain to eat noodles on Valentine's Day. Look at that. The duck went up the mountain to eat noodles on Valentine's Day. Another five letters. So we had five and five. That's Dan. And there are only how many letters of the alphabet? Only 26, so we have done almost half. So it's not really such a difficult job when you put some memory ways of uh, remembering. And aside from just learning a few letters at a time or grouping a few letters at a time, 
we can actually have the whole alphabet. And the key to knowing whether you're ready for word building is to look at the whole alphabet and see if you can touch the letter that I'm pronouncing. So where is pig? Pig in a pen. So you can touch the p. And where is x, 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 x? Like six sticks crisscrossing each other. And where is k? Uh, another k. Because we have two ways of making the k sound, the kick and the cat. And look how we drew the cat. We had the cat shaped like a letter k. So anyway, when we have the whole alphabet in our view and every day we learn a few sounds and we review the sounds that we have learned, this leads to fluency in recall of the shape and sound of the letters. So this is a good time to uh, answer any questions. And um, if you're on a computer, you could chat in on the YouTube link. You could send me an email to Mark Tullis at Gmail. Or you could call my cell phone or text my cell phone at 312-545-3865. And then if you um, also, you could um, Google Hangout through the same thing if you wanted to show us something. And to, so the same Gmail address, Mark Tullis, M-A-R-K-T-U-L-L-O-S-S at gmail.com. Because uh, this workshop is, is here to answer any of your questions. And um, that's, uh, this would normally take uh, several lessons for a child to get to this point. <laughs> so this is a, a, good, a good point. Um, and so just chime in any time, we can backtrack, but we'll keep going now into um, building words, right? Okay. Was there any question? No? Nope. No questions yet. Okay, everything's so clear. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's start building words. That means spelling them with letters. And every letter is cut out. So if we have the word cat represented by the picture of cat, say it, cat. You hear the first sound, k. So we pick the letter k from the cutouts. Then the second is a vowel, k, a. And the vowel is not very easy to recognize, so we usually just show it the first time. A ah is the second sound. K ah. Now the last one is easy to recognize. K at. The last sound is a t. So we pick out the t and put it at the end. So we are complete. We now can read k at. And if you had enough practice in the previous exercise of segmenting and blending, you should be able to say cat. K at says cat. And then we pick out the one word that says cat to match the word that has been built up. Then we use the word in a sentence because the object is communication. So cat can be used in a sentence. What shall we say about the cat? Like, I have a pet cat. Or my cat is dear to me. Or my cat's name is Elizabeth. <laughs> so we can <coughs> use the word in a sentence is also is a training for composition, which comes later, and we, we start now. The idea is if you know where you're going, which is composition, 
then you start doing a little of that at this level of word building. Okay, next. Now we go to lesson six, building words, short vowel words that has blends. Now we have two kinds of blends. We have uh, ending blends, like in fact, act, fact. It's a fact that everybody can learn how to read. That's a fact. And it's a fact that some never learned how to read. That's kind of tough. That's a tough fact. But it's a fact that each one can teach one. Okay? Now, if we have a beginning blend, that means the two letters in the beginning are blended together, bl, as in black, the color black. Black is the color that the judges wear. I don't know why, but that's what they wear. Or black is the color of the sky when it's about to rain. Or black is the color of the night. Bl or black. Next. Once you have learned how to build, that means decode and blend, that means say the word using short vowel words and blends, you could read a lot of words. In fact, you feel empowered. In fact, you get sensitized to the words around you. And all of a sudden, you want to have this word attack skill. Every time you look, you want to say, what is that saying? That's a clear sign that you have been learning something. Now, if you were not taught phonics, you would not have that sensitivity. You will always be asking, what does this say? And then I say it to you and you repeat it. But no, you don't want to do that. You want to decode it, break it down, and say it. After the short vowels, then comes the rest of the sounds. And you have the long vowels. There are only five long vowels. Well, seven, including the double O and short double O. But there are several ways to represent each long vowel. So if A is represented by the A with a bar on top, that's a symbol for long A. And the two letter clusters to represent long A will be AI, A, and AY, A. Why are we using two letters? Because we run out of letters. We only had 26 letters of the Roman alphabet that the English have adapted, and we have 45 sounds. So how are we going to represent the rest? By letter combinations. So AI and AY are the two A sounds. There will be more later, but for now this is a good start. And then how do you represent the long E sound with two E's, as in eel or green, or EY as in key. The key to reading is learning how to read green. I, how do we represent I? Oh, by the way, immediately teach I with a capital I as a word in itself. I, I can read, I can write, I can learn, I. But aside from that, you have clusters. Like I eat together says I. Like a pie, oh my, I want a piece of pie, but it kind of got messed up on my tie. And the letter Y is also 
uh, symbol for the long I. So we have fly. Have you seen a fly cry? Oh no, oh my. Because the fly is too shy to cry. Then we have the long O sound. And we have three ways to represent it at this point. You have O, O-A, as in coal or soap or goal. Our goal is to be able to read very well so we don't get coal for Christmas. Or you can have O-E as in toe and ho. Be careful when you're using the ho that you don't hit your toe. Or O as in O-W. Pretty soon in Chicago you will see snow. Oh, oh no. But Carlos will be happy to see snow. He likes winter. Now, we also have long U sound represented by UE as in what color? Blue. And also with EW as in new. When the moon is new, we call it the blue moon. Aside from this AIOU, we have double O sound with the sound of ooh, like moon. The famous rhyme, the moon ran away with a spoon, or is it the spoon ran away with a moon? Or short double O, and it has the sound of book. Book, hook, took. I took the book by the brook so I can cook by the water, by the brook. So um, we've graduated into the, the book portion of the reading program. And the great thing is, is we've seen people just instantly pick this up and add their own twists and styles to how they're going to, to use this and how it works for an individual learner. And um, by the concept of having the books is to actually um, have a little bit more practice in writing. So once you've gone through lessons five and six in all the processes of um, combining letters to make words and you've written them down a few times, now you'll be used to this notebook process and be able to write them and you won't need um, the many, many, many pieces of letters anymore to, to combine things like when we were in this stage. And so now we can um, progress onto the books and um, things must really be very crystal clear at this point. And um, we are moving right along and I would really encourage you to uh, write to us, call us, text us, uh, chat in if you have any questions um, so that we you know, can get a little feedback and know how you're feeling about all of this and um, maybe just if I know there are some people who are new to this program and just let us know what your experience was when you opened the box and checked out the parts. So uh, we'll move on to consonant digraphs. Mm -hmm. Okay. When our forefathers started adapting the Roman alphabet to represent the English language. They, they were in a dilemma as to how do we represent these other sounds. So the other sounds like digraphs. Sh is represented by S and H together. Now, the difference between a cluster and a, cl and a digraph is that the digraph has a new sound that's separate from the individual sound. So when you have the S sound, S, and the H sound, you don't say S-H, you say 
So there's a special lesson how to teach that with the single letter alphabet with a s and the h, and you call them sh, and with a k and the h, and you call them ch, and the t and h, and it is th for thimble, w and h, w, as in whip or wheel. Then, this is something that is not in the Nihaus alphabet, which I always write it and add it to the Barry set, and you should do too. Write N K because you don't really pronounce N K, it's N K, Oink, Pink. You don't say Pin K, no, you say Pink. So if you have the N K sound as a separate sound, as a digraph, you know that it, it has its own sound. Then there's also the NG. You don't say ng. No, there's no such thing as I like to hear you sing a song, son, ng. No, you say song, sing a song. The NG has its own sound. It's a digraph. Okay. Aside from long vowels, digraphs, we have diphthongs. These are two vowels together, such that they have a different sound, just like a new sound, just like the digraphs have a new sound, the, the diphthongs have a new sound. So these are very common when you say aw, like laud and hall. I haul this boxes to the mall. And A-W, aw. I saw, I saw, S-A-W. I saw a man haul, hauled a box to the mall. Then there's the oi sound, O-I, and that starts with oil, boil, coil, like you coil your, uh, your hose so that it won't be very, very long. Or the snake coils itself so that it won't be stepped upon. And then there's boil, and soil, and toil. All of that has the O-I sound, oi. Or there's the O-Y, has the same sound. The boy had a new toy. And he likes to eat soy beans. And then there's another sound, diphthong. The ow, ow, o u, like don't speak loud, don't speak so loud, because your neighbor can hear you. Or how, the other one, o w, how. How is the lesson going? It's good, says the cow. Okay. Then, when you have R with a vowel, it modifies the vowel a little bit, and that's why we call them R-controlled vowels. So, A-R is R, car. Can you ride a car all the way to the star? Uh, try it. How about E-R, er? Her mother was here, and she was very nice, but stern. O-R, do you know how to use the fork? 
about you or her. She wore a beautiful fur for winter. So that's our controlled vowels. With that, we have introduced all the sounds. The rest are different ways of saying the same thing that we have learned before. Why are we doing that? Because in the history of building the English language and translating it into the Roman alphabet, using the Roman alphabet, it was an open season for everybody. Everybody was just trying their own way how to, how to represent it. So all of them were accepted spelling at that time. Then, when the time came to standardize spelling because of the invention of the printing press, they started talking about, well, what shall we do? Well, let's, let's adapt the ones that have been widely used, widely adapted by the citizens. And that's, they, they probably picked the first two or so most popular ways of spelling. Then they accepted both. So that's why we have different ways of spelling the same sound. Now, C after E has the sound of S. So this is cent. Do you have a penny or a cent? Now, G that follows, oh, that's before I has the sound of J. So we have G that's before the E. It also has the sound of J. So we have Jin J. J. So instead of Ginger, it's Jin J. Instead of Kim, it's Sent. Now S with the sound of Z is pronounced as posy. Also, when you, pr when you say is, it's not really this is. This is a book. It's really this is a book. Or you don't say his mommy is here. You say his. It has the S with the sound of Z. His mommy is here. And we use the keyword of posy, which is a flower as our sample. Okay, then we already know that the double E has the sound of E. But we also have another way of representing that sound. If it is, if the Y, letter Y, is the final sound of a multi-syllable word, not just one syllable, because if you have fly, for example, you don't say flea, you say fly because we learned that as a long I sound. But if it's multi-syllable word like party, the Y has the E sound, party, baby, and fairy. And we have a fairy there as our symbol. Now this is my favorite, especially for Christmas because I can have a table that means the L-E at the end is just pronounced as L. You don't say table or candle. You don't say candle or maple. You don't say maple or cradle, cradley. So I placed a candle on the maple table so I can sing about the cradle. By the way, I did write a whole thing about Christmas and language. Find it in our website. Now, this is lesson 15. It's called the double consonant rule. What is the double consonant rule? When the vowel precedes only one consonant, like halo, H-A-L-O, 
the consonant is L, only one L, and the vowel is A, you pronounce the A with a long vowel sound. So it's halo. However, when the vowel is followed by a double consonant, like hello, you don't say halo anymore. You say hello, hello. There's a halo around the hello tree. Now, the next is silent letters. Why do we have silent letters? Let me tell you. They were not silent at one time. In the beginning, they were actually pronounced. Could you believe that? They were actually pronounced, every single letter. So that word there is ginao, and we're in, and kombu. Oh, well, the other rule, too, is that they just wanted to imitate the Roman style of spelling, and they just added them so that it looks like a Roman letter. So that's how we have silent letters. And that, this is fully explained in, in our lesson. So you can look at it, look at what I wrote, and look at the examples. So silent G is no. You know the story about the lion and the mouse? And what did the mouse do? The mouse gnawed to tear down the net that had trap the lion. Ren is a bird. Comb. Comb. You don't say comb, right? But it was added, the B was added to resemble the Roman word. An herb. It's silent H, herb. Okay, next. Now this is called exception to the rule. Okay, like EA was introduced before as the long E sound, like leaf, l e. Now we're showing you that people have come to use this spelling, bread. E-A is now pronounced as eh, bread. I have read that bread is good for you. Now, also, E-A sometimes is pronounced with a long A sound, like pear. We have a pear tree in our backyard. Pray. It's not the kind of pray where you fold your hands and close your eyes. It's the kind of pray that you don't want to be a prey because you'll be eaten up. And EY is pronounced with a long A sound. Orchid, the CH, I showed you before that CH has the sound of ch. But now I'm telling you that it has the sound of k. Oh, by the way, the EY was shown before as having the sound of E as in key. And now I'm showing it to you as the EY as in A. Pray. Okay? So we have surveyed the sounds of the alphabet. And the sounds of the alphabet used single letters or letter clusters. Now, there are only 45 total sounds, and they're called phonemes. So you can start counting. I did tell you what they were. So write them down and count whether you actually have 45 sounds, which includes the other sounds that I didn't tell you, but they're all in our alphabet chart. Now just imagine, there are only 45 sounds. And how many school, school days are there in a year? Quite a few, right? And if you teach it right, you don't really need but 15 minutes a lesson. And if you teach it right, you will motivate 
the child to learn because they feel empowered that now they know what this is saying, that they're not just accepting what you tell them, what it says, but they can actually decode and say it for themselves. And I have seen several children do that. And Montessori herself said that there's an explosion to reading, that once they can read, they just read and read and read and read. I actually had a student who could not read until at the end of first grade, and the mother was nervous that he could not read. And I told the mother that, don't worry, because I taught him every day. And the mother said, yes, but he could not read. I said, don't worry, because all of that learning is going on, but he just hasn't shown. And guess what? They went on vacation in New York with four books, just to kind of pass the time. But while they were there, he read. And they called me up and say, can you hear Jamesy read? We have used up all the books, and we're just reading the same book over and over. So it does happen. Just teach, and the child will learn. Just keep a positive attitude and keep the child motivated, and the child will, child will learn how to read. So let's read. Each one, teach one. So I could see how it might be a little intimidating to chime in on a, on a live stream, as the producer in me is a little disappointed, but um, because we did figure out a good way for this to, to work, so we can actually speak to each other in real time. But in the meantime, um, I'm going to bring up the website... screen here uh, at loveoflearningllc.com and under resources there are um, how-to videos so we've gone through step by step in um, like we said before you'll have your own style of working with this material but you might pick up some some um, finer points in watching these how-to videos and um, there's also a blog section that um, we're going to be a little bit more active with since we're now getting into the live streaming action. We just did a video segment on uh, classroom management, so that will also be coming up on our Facebook page. We're going to be doing things on Facebook Live, so uh, Love of Learning LLC also has a Facebook page. And you'll be able to see some, some great things there. We're streaming by Facebook Live. It seems to be all of the rage these days. So um, if you like this page, you'll be notified when we're going live with new workshops. And um, also, this is a great place to engage when you've had some success. We'd love to hear um, you know, stories of, of people learning to read and fun things that you've done, especially the outside um, of the actual material exercises, if you've found creative ways to reinforce what you've done, it's, it would be a great thing to share with people and exchange so that um, everybody could benefit from that. So uh, we are way ahead of schedule. Um, still looking for anybody to... Um, chime in with a question or not, or a phone call, or a text, um, but it's okay. Um, I was just telling somebody that uh, lessons don't need to be long, and if you, um, especially if you find a child reaching frustration, you can just move on or find a different way to spend the time. So I think um, we're gonna sign off and we can do this via um, emails and comments later. We're probably going to reshare this link onto the Love of Learning um, Facebook page, as well as you'll be able to find this session on the Love of Learning blog session. Again, if you want to review 
what happened over here. There's also on the website a great uh, presentation on the history of language, and it talks, gives you more in-depth appreciation of how some of English came to be. And um, we thank you for your time and attention. And do you have any sign-off words? Yes, a book is forthcoming pretty soon. But I can't really tell you when, but, but it has been in the works. and It's brilliantly written. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's, <laughs> but it's done with care, and it would be handy for you as you spring forward with teaching. Remember that everything that you teach is not lost, even if you don't see the results right away. Just like when you plant the seed, it won't grow immediately overnight. It would take a while, but it will grow. All right. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you guys next time, and we'll look for your comments, questions, and feedback online. Thanks a lot.